What is honor? Courage. Commitment. At Annapolis, it's not what you say, it's what you do. For a century, Hollywood has portrayed the heroes among us. The valor of young men and women in our military. Offering life in full measure. Angels of ambition and service to America. Charting four years of educational epiphany. Midshipmen soon to volunteer for duty on the edge. Sailing the high seas. Submerged fathoms deep. Jetting supersonic across the sky. Launched into space. Leaping into hell for a heavenly cause. As this nation commemorates Veterans Day, honoring those who've gone before, all in uniform today, you are invited to experience with us individual excellence on display at the United States Naval Academy. This is Fox NFL Sunday. We're here for it. All right, you know what? Jay's with the midshipmen now. We got time to spend a lot of... Uh, Let's just say productive time quality, with the midshipmen yesterday. Time. Quality time. Jimmy and I were hey. on the sailboats. Yeah, Kurt, you know, I, I've been boating for 70 years. Uh, uh, First time on a sailboat. I didn't realize there was so much work on this. Thing. You didn't? Oh, you were doing the yelling commands. I was out there actually doing the work with the midshipmen. <laughs> You're directing, Jimmy. Well, Look at this. This is work. Uh, hey. <laughs> Midship and Trey Curry helped me with my commands. <laughs> it all worked, and we won the race against the other sailboat. I don't see also, another boat. Also, while we were sure? doing that, Terry Bradshaw was spending time inside a simulator, yep. having a good time there. That's right. What? Well, a good time? I'm so good at driving this ship. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. oh. Look at this. I mean, look how cool and calm I am right there. That's good stuff. That's because you will, couldn't yeah. hit me. Hey, I heard it. I heard you got seasick, TV. I was on my verge. On the verge. <laughs> <laughs> two more I, months and I was out of there. I got to tell I, you. Two I, more took, weeks. I took uh, Terry out fishing one time. He said, are we going to always be able to see land? <laughs> what would you hey, do, Jay? I got to do a little combat training yesterday. This is me with Bay and that's right here. Check this one. Wait, watch the ninja move. Watch it. Come on. Uh, 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 let's see what we got here. Oh, uh, come on. There it is. Bam. Whoa. A little ninja move. Uh, I got to train them in wrestling yesterday also. It's great in our little MVP, who's got your back count there. Love it. All right, then Howie. Howie, how's your back feeling today, buddy? Not bad, actually. I was kind of surprised. I feel pretty good. I mean, we had a chance to we go had out a ball. And, and row with really? the crew team, which was absolutely an incredible experience. And then we got to a little race. Look at my man, oh my Howard. How are you feeling today? <laughs> That I wasn't sure you guys. if the shoulder was going to stay in, the back was going to go out. <laughs> who won? I, Where are the shorts? Well, well, Kurt, I'm not going to brag about who won because it's not important. Oh. I am going to say <laughs> that we both contributed. We had a fantastic time. And I was looking yeah, at how we think like it. When is this going to be over? Because we were rowing for a while. <laughs> we were rowing for a while. Uh, how many lots of you have been able to do? That was about as fun as we have had on one of these excursions. Absolutely. All right. Patriotism, the colors. Gleaming swords on parade. Along the Chesapeake Bay. Steeled in the traditions of the United States Naval Academy. Inspired by the gallantry of Revolutionary War hero John Paul Jones. The eternal final command of Captain James Lawrence. Immortalized as successors step forward with one mission. Guided by timeless core values. Honor, courage, commitment. In 1845, Secretary of the Navy George Bancroft selecting these grounds on the Severn River for the formation of scientific and accomplished officers. From 50 at first to a brigade of more than 4,000 today, pursuing degrees in 27 fields of study. Through its halls, 84,000 midshipmen representing America's diversity have been commissioned into the Navy and Marine Corps. Including more than 6,300 women, with 331 in this year's class. From knowledge, sea power. For 176 years, projecting and protecting our global interests. Each midshipman 
experiences personal transformation from induction to graduation at Annapolis. So let's hear it for a couple of dignitaries who really helped us out while we're here this week. Commandant of Midshipman Colonel J.P. McDonough and Deputy Superintendent Captain Jim Bates. Thank you so much for all you've done, not just this weekend, but in the lead up and the build up as we get here. And we talk about the midshipmen, we talk about the Navy. Folks, my man TB's got a connection to all of these great men and women. His father, William Marvin Bradshaw, served in the Navy. Born April 29th, 1927, Mr. Bradshaw was part of the World War II draft officially registering on May 21st, 1946. That's his actual draft card. He served at Pearl Harbor with Utility Squadron 1, VJ-1, performing any and all tasks ranging from reconnaissance to rescues to serving as an extraordinary handyman on the Pacific Fleet. How about Terry's dad, Mr. Yes. Bradshaw? Yes. Thank you. I know one of the beautiful stories about my father going over to Pearl Harbor, he met Carl Gay. Carl Gay was my mother's brother. And while my dad was trying to put the uh, Naval Academy back together, all the ships and everything, it, at Pearl Harbor, he met Carl Gay. He went home with him on leave, met my mother, and six weeks later, they got married and were married for 69 years. Thank you, Navy. <laughs> six weeks. That's, 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 my Uncle Billy was in the Navy for 30 years. Uh, bit, Uncle Billy, Uncle 30 Billy. years. <laughs> to all the service men and women, Michael's father served in the Army as well. So many people have connections to the U.S. military. That's what makes this country great. Exactly. Right. Before we go to break, every college has his big man on campus. Here, it's Brigade Commander Jackie Booker, Jr., named after Jackie Robinson. He's the number one ranked midshipman in his senior class. So with the help of the U.S. Naval Glee Club, the Orangeburg, South Carolina native has been given the honor of paying tribute to the midshipmen who lost their lives in combat. Within the heart of Bancroft, these steps ascend to Memorial Hall. Engraved within these walls, 2,700 names, men and women, Navy and Marine officers. Distinguished amongst tens of thousands of Annapolis graduates are these who made the ultimate sacrifice in service to America. Every midshipman, as did those remembered here, freely took an oath when they entered the academy to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That commitment concludes, so help us God. As Veterans Day nears, the future leaders at Annapolis being developed today in body, mind, and spirit are inspired by all who have served in every branch of our military. I'm Brigade Commander Midshipman First Class Jackie Booker. Memorial Hall atop this staircase, a sacred place at the United States Naval Academy. And, you know, one of the greatest coaches of all time, Bill Belichick, well, he knows his call the yard as well. He basically grew up here. Bill's dad, Steve Belichick, was a coach and scout for the Navy for 35 years, which, as you may guess, left a lasting impression. I spent a lot of time there with my dad, and some of the biggest lessons I learned were from the Naval Academy, even though I didn't attend it. And I think the things I learned there were work ethics. Keep working, keep grinding, get better. Unselfishness. Do your job. We just need everybody to do their job. Follow the, the direction of the leadership. That's the way we got to play. Those are the kind of the lessons that I grew up with, and I didn't know anything. I was, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, but in retrospect, looking back, the reason why those guys made such an impression on me, I thought that was the only way it was. Prepare and show up and play and win. I thought that everybody was early out to practice, looking to do extra, stay late after practice, supportive of their teammates, unselfish, whatever the job was, just do it. That's my job, anything to help the team. That's a great job. I'm so proud of you, sir. I was very fortunate to be there. I remember catching passes, maybe I should say dropping passes from stallbacks. He just needs somebody to throw to, you know. He just, he worked hard at it. 
and they were very successful, and that taught me a lot. Well, the Belichick name will be here at the U.S. Naval Academy forever. This is the Midshipman Lounge, where they have over 400 football books dedicated by the Belichick family, and both of Bill's parents, Stephen and Jeanette Belichick, are buried here at the U.S. Naval Academy Cemetery. Jimmy, you know Bill Belichick. This place is really special to him. It is special. Not long ago, it, the, they gave Bill the key to the city. And John Madden recently made a quote. He said that Bill Belichick is the greatest historian of the NFL that they have ever seen. And that's qu quite a legacy. And it all started here at the Naval Academy. You can see he talked about it really. It was ingrained in him here? from a child. Exactly. I really feel like there's a special feeling there. Feeling the spirits. These guys were just you know, brothers. Their brotherhood was born at Annapolis. Brendan Looney arrived an accomplished athlete who would play football and then lacrosse for Navy. Travis Mannion was just as athletic in a different sport as a nationally ranked wrestler for the midshipmen. I would describe their bond as extremely close. I remember meeting Brendan and thinking like, uh, this is, this, this guy reminds me of Travis. I very much remember thinking that Brendan and I were just like going out to dinner or going on a date to go see a movie. And Travis was just there. You know, he's like, I don't feel like a third wheel. <laughs> Inseparable, they graduated in 2004. Yep, yep. As a parent, there couldn't be a prouder moment. But then, on the other hand, it was a lot of concern that our sons were going to go off to war. Travis deployed first. On his second tour in April 2007, two members of his team were wounded on patrol in Iraq. Trying to pull them to safety, he was shot by an enemy sniper. We got a knock on the door. And, you know, you're just, you're, you're worst, uh, your worst nightmare. You know, to lose my only son, it was, um, I was in shock. We were all in shock. And, uh, you know, we, we didn't know how we were going to go forward. Marine First Lieutenant Travis Mannion was 26 years old buried near his family home in Pennsylvania. When Brendan found out, he was in training to become a Navy SEAL. I was lucky enough to room with Travis at the Naval Academy for two years. In a very short time, he came another building with me. He was a great friend, and I'll forget him. The sadness that I know that he felt about Travis's death, he used it as motivation. He was the honor man of his class. I think he was just more motivated than usual and just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. In 2008, two days after his wedding to Amy, Brendan deployed. Two years later, and a week before returning home on his 59th combat mission, Brendan's helicopter crashed in Afghanistan. When I saw his body come off at Dover, and we went through that entire process of receiving the body, that's when it really hit me. Yeah. Can I just have a moment? <laughs> you know, I was in our living room, and we have a bunch of pictures on the wall. Um, you know, 
We'll have no more pictures of Brendan. And then I'm thinking, you know, my... Uh, my family will never be the same. You know, our family's broken. And, uh, you know, we're going to miss him, you know, forever, you know. Navy Lieutenant and SEAL Brendan Looney was 29 years old. I immediately said that I wanted Brendan to be buried with Travis at Arlington National Cemetery. At the time, I didn't even remember that Travis was not at Arlington. Travis is buried in Philadelphia. It was kind of at that moment, this like teetering on moving Travis. My parents called me and my mom said, we're moving Travis to Arlington. Three days before Brendan was buried, Travis's body was moved to lay side by side with his best friend. You know, they roomed together at the Naval Academy, and now they rest beside each other, giving the ultimate sacrifice. Knowing that Brendan was with someone that he loved, he respected, and that he cared for, that gave me hope. I miss Brendan every day, but here they are, their buddies reunited, they're together forever. That's the part that does make me feel good. You know, I miss the little things like being able to, to watch a football game on a Sunday. I miss having my best friend around with me. But I'm really proud of who they are and what they did. Both Brendan Looney and Travis Mannion, among other commendations, received the Bronze Star for their acts of valor. Both have foundations named after them. Amy, who's remarried with a daughter and another child on the way, works with Ryan at the Travis Mannion Foundation, helping to empower veterans to deploy all their talents in their communities back home. They work under a simple mantra, if not me, then who? Kurt, we thank these families for sharing this story and all veterans and their families for their service, dedication, and commitment. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. <laughs> 